Hi friends, I'm Jeff Elliott. I'm one of the producing artistic directors of The Noise Within. And I'm Julia Rodriguez Elliott, the other producing artistic director. <laughs> this is that time of the year when we have the exciting task of announcing our upcoming season. And this is our 23-24 season. As many of you know, we try to identify a theme that uh, courses through the veins of each of the titles that we create for a coming season, both the fall and the, spring, and the spring. It binds them together and it gives you something to watch for. And all of these plays has something in common. It is that there is a chronic imbalance in each of these plays, whether it's societal, personal, uh, globally, and all of these characters are working to try to find a balance that works for them. Sometimes it works hilariously, and sometimes it works very movingly and even tragically. So this year's theme is Balancing Act. And the first play of the fall season is a play that we're really thrilled to produce. It was first commissioned by the Steppenwolf Theater in 2005 and received a, a, an incredible production there and has been produced all over the country and we're very excited to bring it to our community. And that is Pulitzer Prize, Nobel Prize winning author, Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. And it is adapted by Lydia Diamond and it is a haunting, poetic, beautiful story uh, about a young black girl who believes that everything will be right in the world if she were to have blue eyes. It's about being seen, about belonging, and being supported. It's a moving story that you will not forget. Mm -hmm. So please do come and see this production. Next up in the fall is Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. We know you've never heard of this play. <laughs> it's rarely done, but we decided to have the courage to go ahead and push the limits and do it. A Midsummer Night's Dream is arguably his greatest uh, comedy. I mean, what can you say about A Midsummer Night's Dream? We did it 20 years ago uh, at the Hollywood Bowl, believe it or not. That was the last time we did it uh, with conductor Esapekka Salonen and the L.A. Phil playing uh, Mendelssohn's A Midsummer Night's Dream under the production itself. It was a very exciting, unforgettable journey for us. And Julia and I are co-directing this production. And I promise you this one will be even more exciting. Don't miss it. Next after that is, of course, A Christmas Carol, uh, the greatest story of uh, forgiveness and transformation, in my opinion, ever written in the English language, Charles Dickens, of course. Um, we love doing this play every year. You would think that we would become really bored by it at a point and just call it in. And the strange thing is we aren't, we don't. The cast continues to want to do it, including me who plays Scrooge. I think because every year we switch it up, we shake it up, and uh, we continue to invest in the depth of the journey that these people are going through. It's always a beautiful event for us. We always have a lot of new people coming to our theater, which is very encouraging, very inspiring for us. They bring their kids with them. And we have a lot of people who are our old timers, not necessarily physically old, but people who have come every year since we first began doing it in 2012. So it's, it's really, really a joyous a event. It's a family tradition for it people. Is. And so we're, we're honored to, to, be a, to be a part of that. And then the spring opens with a show that I think this, is a, a, there was, this was a pre-pandemic production that we were scheduled to do. And this is the one play that I get the most requests for. Are you ever going to do it? Are you going to do it? And so, yes, we are going to be doing it and it's going to open our spring season. And that is Stephen Sondheim's Sweeney Todd, you know, a heart stopping uh, thriller. And one of the joys for us of presenting musicals in our intimate space is that not only do you get the scale that our, our space provides, uh, but you also get 
an intimate look at musicals, which is not something that we often have have an opportunity to do where we're able to to lift the story in much the same way that we were able to do for Man of La Mancha. So we are just delighted to finally get to produce uh, Sweeney Todd. It'll be a wild ride, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, next up in the spring, our continued commitment and exploration of August Wilson's The American Century Cycle. This will be our fourth in that series, and it's King Headley II. Uh, again, directed by Greg Daniel. Uh, for those of you who saw Seven Guitars last year, you'll be especially de delighted and I think fascinated by this play because it takes place only a few years later. And actually two of the characters from Seven Guitars make an appearance in King Headley II. It's moving. It again is about a chronic imbalance personally in which the cards are stacked against our uh, principal protagonist. Um, August Wilson's language is unparalleled. It is certainly Shakespearean in terms of its soaring heights and what he does to craft a play. He was a genius. And so we are incredibly thrilled to be bringing the fourth in the 10 play installment. And finally, we're going to close the season with a playwright that we've had a long re relationship with and hasn't been on our stage for a little while. And that is George Bernard Shaw's Misalliance. And um, this is a play where you can expect the unexpected. He calls it a debate in one sitting. However, no one ever sits for very long. There are, <laughs> if this is a debate, you better strap yourself in for this particular debate. That's right. There are eight proposals in the play and there's a plane crash. Uh, <laughs> it, is, um, it is George Bernard Shaw at his, reckless is probably not the right word, but, but the characters are all so vulnerable and the, the, there's this wonderful loss of control that I think makes the play a wonderful pairing with Midsummer Night's Dream because it's, it's all about what love does to us and how through the chaos of love, we have the ability to find ourselves. It's, it's so much fun. It is Mr. Toad's wild ride. It's all over the place. And again, it's about wild imbalance as all of these people try to uh, create the world in their own image and the fun that comes out of that. So that is our 2023-2024 season uh, balancing act. We are very excited about it and we hope you are too. We want to take a moment to thank all of you, our, our subscribers. Uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. You are those early investors that believe in us, believe in our ability to curate a provocative, thoughtful, bold season. And we um, are grateful for your trust and we are grateful for um, your support in ensuring that uh, our mission continues to thrive. So thank you very much for that. And as Jeff said, we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Thank you.